Yeah, so regarding AI, we definitely have a rise of AI cyber threats and this, of course, introduced new um, attack vectors and vulnerabilities. And in my opinion, it's the most important point to have a proactive threat intelligence. And this is also where artificial intelligence can definitely help and is also asked for to help. So it's about continuous monitoring of cyber threats because you can uh, uh, employ advanced threat intelligence tools uh, to monitor, for example, the dark web, underground forest, Forums or social media channels for these emerging threat and at hack vectors. And since 2019, we are already discussing the fact that um, AI can um, be used to enhance cybersecurity through AI powered threat analysis. So, uh, with um, AI algorithms, you'll be able to leverage or to, to analyze vast amounts of data to identify certain patterns and anomalies that could indicate potential attacks. And it's of course also about, about threat modeling. So to possibly to conduct uh, regular threat modeling exercises um, to identify potential vulnerabilities in IT systems and of course develop also uh, mitigation um, strategies. But I think the whole issue on how to tackle the AI challenge and um, how to deal with AI-based cybercrime is also based on a broader infrastructure issues that we have to take into account. So it's about building a robust cybersecurity infrastructure in a company that, that could mean, for example, that you have a multi-layered security approach. So that includes firewalls, intrusion detection systems, which can be, of course, AI-based, antivirus software, and of course, endpoint uh, protection solutions. And what still a lot of companies do not do, even though it's very important regarding cybersecurity, it's regular patching, um, and updates so that you ensure that all systems and software uh, are kept up to date uh, with the latest patches and security updates. And um, a big topic that is currently arising is the um, idea of security by design. And this will also be legally regulated with the upcoming Cyber Resilience Act in the European Union, uh, which pre prescribes security by design as a standard measures for every product with digital components. But this is also not only a product uh, security issue, but also an issue of general cybersecurity compliance management at companies. So you should ensure that, for example, uh, the devices that are being used by, by your employees in a company have secure um, configuration that adhere to the best uh, security practices and guidelines uh, or security guidelines that have been created um, in a company. And last but not least, um, I would also say it's about employee training and awareness. There are a lot of people saying awareness, that's just a buzzword which we are dealing with and this has no further value. But it is still the case that a lot of successful cyber attacks are conducted because you have lacking awareness of employees in your companies. And that means um, that when AI is, for example, used for spear phishing attacks, people must be aware of that risk. And that can only be done if you have regular training. So if you if you provide employees with ongoing um, training uh, on, on cybersecurity best practices, including also how to recognize and report these phishing attempts, social engineering attacks, um, um, uh, CEO fraud, for example, and any other common threats that are ongoing with AI. And then you conduct, for example, regular phishing simulations to test employees' awareness and response um, abilities to potential um, attacks. And what might be the most important uh, point regarding this um, that you have incident response planning so that you as a company develop a comprehensive incident response plan um, that outlines steps to be taken um, in the event of a cyber attack. Well, NIST 2 prescribes several measures for risk management and cybersecurity. And generally, uh, companies are in charge uh, to create a risk management system. And this risk management co system can consist of many different parts. And one of these parts can be, of course, the use of a AI technology uh, for threat identification and fighting against uh, cyber threats. Generally speaking, uh, regarding this too, we'll have a lot of small and medium-sized enterprises who do, do not even have any kind of cybersecurity knowledge so far. And some of them also do not have the resources regarding um, budget and personal resources for implementing an adequate level of cybersecurity. And this is why uh, the NISTU directive clearly prescribes that measures of artificial intelligence might be used for cybersecurity compliance as well um, when it comes to automated uh, threat detection or threat 
uh, reaction mechanism. And there are currently several products that are being in use and that are offered on the market. That means open source uh, products, but also proprietary products that use AI. And uh, as I mentioned in the question before, there are several uh, scenarios or use cases where AI can help to fight cybercrime in a, as a part of a security management system. So, for example, you have self-learning functions and AI tools can help you uh, regarding um, detecting anomalies and certain patterns. And the best thing, of course, is that when you have deep learning tools, that they uh, reinvent um, themselves regularly based on the threat detection level uh, and the responses that will have to be taken. Um, and that possibly regarding transfer learning, um, AI systems are also able uh, to develop themselves and uh, to use certain information that has been gained uh, regarding a certain threat vector to comparable um, situations. And for this reason, um, this too clearly states that member states should enforce the use of innovative technology, um, also including artificial intelligence, um, to fight against cybercrime. And that machine learning um, is something that can be used um, by companies to be compliant um, to NIST 2. So uh, this is, of course, a very, a very good question because you always have the case that you have a certain level of cybersecurity regulation, uh, but the threat situation and the attack vectors often change very regularly and faster than uh, the regulator can create new laws. And this is why when we talk about the intersection of AI regulation, cybersecurity and threat vectors, we have to take into account certain principles that we have to focus on and especially the legislator uh, will have to focus on. And one specific thing here is that rather than prescribing some kind of rigid rules, um, legal regulations should focus on establishing overarching principles of cybersecurity. And this allows for more flexibility as AI technologies evolve, um, and preventing them from becoming obsolete, these legal rules, because they cannot change um, fast enough. And um, there is also the chance possibly for the legislator um, to encourage more transparency, and uh, accountability and legal tech regulation. So this can, for example, ensure um, that certain AI systems uh, are being used ethically and responsibly. And this is also a case for cybersecurity. And accountability is a big uh, question when we talk about AI systems, because currently we do not have very clear rules on AI liability, even if it's used, it is used for cybersecurity. I think this is relevant for any use case of AI. Um, last but not least, it's also important that we have or that we promote uh, collaboration uh, between the different actors that are use um, AI systems and cybersecurity. So that means governments, industry and academia should definitely work stronger together than it has been the case before. And that means if you take the knowledge from all these three sectors, it is more likely um, that you develop regulations that are both effective on one hand and um, uh, on the same hand that they are still um, conducive um, um, to innovation. And this could possibly involve public-private partnerships, expert advisor groups, or any other formats of open dialogues. And generally speaking, when it comes to tech regulation and cybersecurity regulation is definitely a part of tech regulation, uh, we should also see regulation as adaptive and iterative. So tech law is always something that's a work in progress. So we have many undefined legal terms, openly formulated legal terms, uh, where the interpretation of these legal terms change because technology and threat vectors changes. So people need to understand, and of course also companies that are addressed by these, by these legal rules, uh, that um, legal rules in cybersecurity are definitely subject to review and revision um, as the technologies or AI, for, as an as example, changes and the societal implications and the economic implications um, become clearer over time. And this is also the case regarding state of the art of technology defined by NIST 2 because we do not see for many sectors and branches that will be additionally affected by this law that there is currently no best practice on how to deal with cybersecurity or what could a best practice be. And this iterative approach will have to be accepted by the companies and the authorities as well, um, because uh, cybersecurity regulation is always in some way um, learning by doing. And <clears throat> the last thing I would like to mention is that we should consider more international cooperation 
in this field as well. So um, cybersecurity and cyber threat threats are a global phenomenon and um, cybersecurity regulation and acting against cyber threats definitely requires international cooperation. So we need more harmonized standards uh, that can prevent regulatory fragmentation um, and ensure with that a level playing field uh, for business um, of equal levels of cybersecurity, hopefully globally. To get to know interesting people and to get with them in the dialogue and for myself to get some more best practices on the use of AI and on the use of new emerging technologies in the field of cybersecurity.